everyone and welcome to Jai Hind Classes Funda Clear. So today I'm going to explain the second chapter for class 10th geography and the chapter is forest and wildlife resources. So forest and wildlife resources. Now this chapter we did talk about it in our class 8th geography as well. In class 8th geography we did talk about forest and wildlife resources. Now the first chapter of this book was resources and development in which I said by mistake that we had discussed about it in class 9th but we had discussed about it in class 8th. So my apologies for that. Now in today's session in today's class what we are going to discuss is that about forest and wildlife resources now this chapter that has been reduced it had been reduced from the syllabus of class 10 in the last two previous years so it is not very a uh, kind of it is not even decided for to uh, discuss for this year syllabus about this chapter so still we will discuss about this chapter now forest and wildlife resources as all of you know that we share this planet we share our planet earth with millions of other their plants, animals and microorganisms and they are beneficial for us as well in ecological balance that is, that is important for our own existence and that is why we can say that we need microorganisms, plants and animals for our survival as well. Like for example what happens that that microorganisms, plants and animals kind of increase the value, increase the you know that quality of increase the quality of air that we breathe the water that we drink and they also help plants also help the soil you know that in soil we have the plants that help the food that help to uh, make the food that we eat that is very important for our survival so they produce the food through plants in the soil we produce the food that is very important for our survival and that is why we can say that that is that this is an ecological balance that has been made by all the microorganisms and plants and animals now in the last chapter we discussed about biodiversity or biological diversity now that means there's a lot of diversity in plants and animals in flora and fauna so we could say that there's a lot of biodiversity and that biodiversity is very very important for our own existence so we cannot neglect the fact of this bio biological diversity or biodiversity biodiversity is a simple term for all the diversity in plants animals and microorganisms so don't get confused by that you could watch the first chapter as well you could study the first chapter as well so let's discuss about this chapter very interesting and small chapter about forest and wildlife resources and without any further ado let's get started with our first topic that is flora and fauna in India so flora and fauna in India. Now let's talk about all the flora and fauna in our country in India. Flora and fauna that means forest and wildlife. The kingdom of plants and kingdom of all the animals and wildlife in a particular area. So it is a kind of scientific term related to all the kingdom of species found in a particular area. So we could say that flora and fauna in India that means all the animals, all the plant species that are found in our country. Now in our country you know what that India is one of the richest wildlife and you know that richest wildlife and plant species country in the world. In India you can find different, there is a lot of biodiversity, you can find different kinds of plants, different kinds of species of animals and all those plants and that is why we could say that, that there is a lot of flora and fauna in our country, variety of flora and fauna in country but there are many species that have been on the verge of extinction that are on the verge of extinction or are very vulnerable that are very critical we could say they are so much on the verge of extinction that is why we call them critical species as well now there are many species which have been extincted but we don't even know about them maybe they have been extincted and we have we have no kind of resource source of you know that information about those animals and we only talk about animals and plants that are left, that are very large in size or in large in size but what about insects and very very small animals they have to be protected as well and that is why we can say that there are a lot of species in our country but need they need to be protected as well now, now there are some classification of all the species based on bear you could say that by IUC and that stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources so on the basis of that there are some classification of species so let's discuss about it now first species that we are have here here 
is normal species so normal species now normal species are those type of species that have that their population is normal for their survival according to their survival and in india for example we could take the uh, species like sal pine and rodents those animals uh, like cattle livestock uh, that we have domesticated in our homes as well so we could say that those are normal species that is their population is enough sufficient for their survival in our country now next species is endangered species endangered species are those type of species that are on a verge of extinction you could say that they have been extinct or on a verge of extinction and for example in our country there could be like asiatic lion and indian wild as indian rhino lion tailed macaque those kind of animal those kind of species that are found in india that are no longer found in india you could say that are on a verge of extinction so we could say that those are endangered species like that if negative factors keep affecting them then there would be no spe there would be no population of those type of species now next kind of species is vulnerable species so vulnerable species now vulnerable sp species are those kind of species that if negative factors keep affecting those kind of species then they will be in the category of endangered species so you could say that they are one level below than the endangered species and that is why we can say that they are also how they are also harmed by the people they are also endangered kind of endangered by the people so we could say that that all the, if all the factors negative factors keep affecting these kind of species then of course in the future they will be on the verge of extinction and will be on the category that is known as the endangered species and some of the examples of this type of species in our country are many there are many kind of those type of species like you know like Indian buffalo those kind of animals they like that are found in our country there are many type of species that are found in our country that are on the verge of extinction or are some kind of some lower below than the world of extinction so we could say that like if we talk about endangered species there are crocodiles and even crocodiles there are three types so we could say that there are gharial the salt water crocodiles the normal water crocodiles and after that in this type of species in vulnerable species there are the species like ASA or you know like Asiatic buffalo Indian buffalo those kind of animals that are on the verge that are not on the verge of extinction but they can be in the future now next species that we have here is rare species so rare species now rare species are those species that are rarely found in our country like if negative factors keep affecting them then they would be in the category in the vulnerable category or in the endangered species category so you could say that they are just one level below than the vulnerable categories and the endangered species now there are also many rare species in our country of many things you could say that of many animals there can be some rare species so you could say that some very very rare species like pink headed duck or the asiatic cheetah or those type of animals that are really found you know like great in the elephant that are also rare species after that we have got the animic species so endemic species now endemic species are those species that are you could say that that are just that are found just in particularly areas like there are barriers of geographical areas or land boundaries so there are barriers of geographical areas and that is why they are found just in particularly areas like Mithun in Arachal Pradesh and in Andaman you know that in islands you could find different varieties of bird like you know that uh, you, there are many islands in the world and in those islands you could find different varieties of bird that are particularly endemic species if we talk about our country then there are andaman pigeons and in andaman there are other type of animals as well so in andaman and nicobar islands you have so many kind of species and in the arunachal pradesh we have mithun so you could say that these are some of the endemic species found in our country after that we have the extinct species now extinct species are those kind of species that are not found where they have to be likely found or where they may occur like for example they are just extinct they have just become extinct for some known reason like they can be extinct from a region from a country from a continent or from the whole earth so we can say that extinct species are those kind of species that are not found no longer
longer found in those areas where they are more likely to be found or where they may occur like for example Asiatic cheetah or the pink-headed duck now we discuss about the classification of species we have the endangered species normal species are those species like you know that uh, cattle rodents and salpine those kind of normal species that are enough for their survival after that we have endangered species that are on the verge of extinction you know that vultures we, you could count vultures as well after that we have many like crocodiles after that we have Indian wild ass and those kind of animals like and after that in vulnerable species we have the great Indian bustard and many other species that are vulnerable prone you could say Indian great elephant as well after that we have endemic species like they are there are some barriers that are taking them that are a kind of storing them that they are present in just one area after that we have the extinct species now here we have to talk about the Asiatic cheetah Asiatic cheetah you know that cheetah is the fastest animal of the earth fastest fastest land mammal of the earth and its speed is 112 kilometers per hour so you could say that that is very fast speed and they are becoming extinct in our countries they are mainly found in Asia and Africa but in Asia they are now becoming extinct they have become an extinct species why is it so you could think of many reasons for you know that there have been so much hunting and there have been so much kind of killing of those leopards and because of less prey as well now many people often get confused between a leopard and cheetah they mistake cheetah for a leopard but there are just some distinguishing marks on cheetah now in cheetah on his nose around his nose you can find some teardrop marks on a cheetah that you can't find on a leopard so don't get confused between a cheetah and a leopard so you could say that these are some classification of species that we have discussed based on IUC and that is International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources after that we have got to discuss about destruction of forest and wildlife so destruction of forest forest and wildlife now let's discuss about the destruction of forest and wildlife the flora and fauna in our country now you know what that if you look around you if you look around your surroundings at your surroundings what would you say that what would you see that that we have transformed the nature into a resource obtaining directly or indirectly from forest and wildlife like fuel father manure medicines leaves barks you know that the wood from the tree and many other things so not just these things but there are many various uh, kind of things that we obtain from the forest and wildlife resources of our country and even the worst period was in the colonial period with the expansion of railways industrial you know the urbanization industries and all with that expansion of rails uh, railways and roads and now so much of construction and mining there was so much kind of depletion of forest and wildlife resources Resources in our country and even after independence it has not been decreased by that much you know what that between 1951 and 1980 it, uh, through the surveys we have found that that 26,200 square kilometers of forest you know that 26,200 square kilometers that is so much you could say all forest has been had been kind of de declared off had been cut off for agricultural expansion for cultivation on that land so we can say that even today agricultural expansion continues to be a very big issue for the forest so we can say that that the expansion of agriculture is also a problem is also a threatening to the forest and that is why we can say that there is a lot of depletion of forest and wildlife resources in our country and not just in the colonial period even after independence we can see a lot of depletion of forest and wildlife resources after that big land projects also affect the forest and wildlife resources like you know that Narmada Sagar project or there are many kind of many projects big land projects that have affected the forest and wildlife resources 
Now, according to the Narmada Saga, you know, the Narmada Saga project, more than 4,000 square kilometers of, uh, you know, that of that land will be declared off. What that land of forest will be cut off. So you could say that there's so much of the land has been cut off. So much of the forest has been cut off just because of these big land projects with the expansion of technology, industrial, and so many regions. And that is why we all we are also decreasing the habitat of many of the species of animals and that is why they are now becoming vulnerable species or rare species or endangered species so that is why we could say that we are the reason them ourselves we ourselves are the reason for their depletion for the depletion of flora and fauna in our country now you know what that over exploitation mining so much of the mining over grazing hunting poaching there are many reasons for the depletion of these forests and wildlife resources after that mining is, uh, mining is also one of the biggest issue for the depletion of forest wildlife resources you know what that if you look at the buksha tiger reserve in west bengal now there is so much a uh, dolomite mining ongoing in that tiger reserve and that is why it is now being exploited now it is now being exploited because of that ongoing dolomite mining so we could say that that mining also uh, kind of decreases the value of the land and kind of affects for the depletion of forest and wildlife resources after that there is an equal proportion of these depletion of resources as well you know what that if you look at the american and somalian an average american consumes 40 percent 40 times more than an average somalian and that is why we could say that there is unequal distribution of all those resources as well it is not that all people are getting equally everything it is not now you know what in our country in our country non society five percent of the upper class society very very rich people in our country India is so much than the last poor 25 percent of for a country so you could say that that there is a kind of unequal distribution of all those resources among the people and that is why we could say that and even in that you know that the responsibility of saving all those forest and wildlife resources for conserving those forest and wildlife resources also lies within the or later within the poor people not all the rich people are for are conserving the forest and wildlife resources so who does that you could say that who's responsible for that and how someone gets that much resources now if we talk about it in our country there is so much poverty and even in poverty there you could say that on the basis of this we can talk about gender inequality as well in poor houses in mass societies what happened that women are the one who are affected the world by this unequal distribution of resources now what happens that in many societies of our country what is the situation is that the responsibility lies within the women to collect the fodder fuel for the how for you know that uh, running the home for running their home for cooking and for the so those things they have to go you know what that if resources are depleted in that area then they have even those women even have to walk 10 kilometers just to fetch water or feed or father so we can say that that they have to walk 10 kilometers or even more and then they have to uh, you know that to run the house they have to take care of the children as well do all the household chores so we could say that that there would be so much implications on the women on the women of those poor societies and that is why we could say that on the basis of this you have to correlate everything you don't just have to study but you have to correlate all the subjects of your SST as well now we saw that they can be gender inequality inequality based on this so we could say that that as much as the condition gets worse it will be more and more on the women as well after that because of this there will be more and more poverty in our country you know what because of this there has been more and more poverty in our country and that is why we have to improve it as well <laughs> So you could say that this is a destruction of all the forest and wildlife resources. As we clear out the forest, what happens that the habitat of all the animals will be cleared off as well. And that is why they will have no place to live on. And that is why they will become vulnerable species or they will be on the verge of extinction. And that is why we have got to conserve all the forest and wildlife resources. Now, you know what? Let's take an example of the Himalayan yew. 
Now, Himalayan yew that are found in Himachal Pradesh, in the Himalayan regions, in Himachal Pradesh, mainly in Himachal Pradesh, and some parts of Uttarakhand. Now, in the bark, roots, and you know, twigs and leaves of that tree, what is found is that that is a chemical that is known as textol. Now, that textol is very useful in treating the cancer, and that is why the Himalayan yew had be, has become the world's the fastest, you could say, the world's largest selling anti-cancer drug. And that is why many forests, many forests of Himalayan yew trees have been cleared off. Many trees of Himalayan yew have been cleared off just because of this anti-cancer drug. And that is why we could say that, that so many of the forests of Himachal Pradesh have also been cleared off. Now this tree, Himalayan, uh, Himalayan yew, that has been, uh, that has become a kind of endangered species, you could say, and that is known as Texas Valenciana in scientific language. So you could say that, that is why for our needs, for our great for our satisfaction we are clearing all those resources we are clearing our environment but later in the future we do have to uh, you know that do have to do the substance substance for uh, you could say the sustainable development that is we have to save for our future generation as well and that's why we need we need to save our subsistence subsistence needs as well so you could say that that is how all the forest and wildlife resources are being destructed now the next topic that we have got on here is conservation of forest and wildlife in India. So conservation of forest and wildlife resources in our country in India. Now you know what that we need to conserve our forest and wildlife resources because it is not just a biological issue but it is correlated to cultural loss as well. It is not just a biological loss but it is related correlated to the cultural loss as well as well as the gender inequality and many other problems like poverty and many the problems so you could say that we need to conserve our wildlife resources and our forestry and that is why there have been some steps that have been taken up by the government of our country by the government of India to conserve our forest and wildlife resources now you know what that in 1972 what happened that that there were some many conservationists that demanded for a kind of national act for wildlife protection and that is why the Indian Wildlife Protection Act was in uh, was a kind of was passed in our country in 1972 and in 1973 and you could say that after that many species were included in that list that were now they were given many kind of against the all they were rights against the illegal trading and poaching and they were give, given some legal rights you could say and in many states you can see many kind of reserves and many wildlife sanctuaries that we had already discussed about in class earth so you could say that many and you know that Jim Corbett National Park, Kaziranga National Park in Assam, Sundarbans in West Bengal, there are many you could find in our country. And you could say that they are for the conservation of wildlife resources and for the forestry. So you could say that many biosphere reserves, many wildlife sanctuaries, and many national parks have been built in many of the states of our country. And that is why we could say that, that these, these steps have been taken by our country, by the government of country to conserve the forest and wildlife resources now earlier there were some species but after that many of the species have now been included into that list like the one on dinosaurs the Indian tiger after that we have the you know that Kashmir stag after that snow leopard and many of the animals have now been included recently and the Indian goat, uh, the Indian elephant as well so we could say that these species that have been added recently into that list that and their conservation has been added just recently and not just this after that we have many kind of insects butterflies as well now in 1986 in 1986 there were many acids were passed and according to which many species of butterflies one species of you know that one species of dragonfly after that molds and many insects and first for the first time the six, the six species of plants were not included in the protection list that is that all the illegal trading all the poaching was now banned and there was a ban on hunting as well of all those wildlife species so you could say that now these steps were taken for the conservation of forest and wildlife resources now there is a project that we must discuss about that we must talk about you know what there are many projects that have been started for conserving some specific animals and one of such projects was the project tiger 
So Project Tiger. Now from the name you could say that that this project was for conserving tiger. Now in 1972, now there were many national, you know, that environmentalists, many conservationists, and they saw that that the number of this population of tigers had been decreased in our country had declined to 1,827. That was around 55,000 at the turn up of the century. So you could say that at the starting of the century, it was around 55. 5,000 population of all those tigers and now it had decreased it had declined to 1,827 what a decrease you could say and that is why there must be some kind of steps taken for the conservation of these tigers of our country you know what the tigers are very beneficial in commercial purposes and financial purposes like their bones and skin are very useful in many of the medicines of Asian countries especially in Asian countries after that there have been illegal hunting of uh, tigers for their skin for their teeth for their nails for their for you could say and for their bones as well and there have been poaching of those animals as well so you could say that because of all these reasons because of increasing human population and decreasing of prey based animals and all those things there had been declined in the population of all the tigers in our country and that is why this project tiger was started in 1972 for the conservation of pro all the tigers in our country now you know what that this project tiger has been a great successful project and has been recognized internationally you could say that even in international institutes it has been recognized as you could say that it, it has been a very successful in our country like many tiger reserves have been built up in our country Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand, Piriyan National Park in Kerala then Sundarbans National Park in West Bengal and many of the other tiger reserves in our country so you could say that for protecting a tiger you know what that tiger is very important and a faunal web and also it is a national animal of our country so we must conserve it we must protect all the tigers in our country and that is why those that project tiger was started in 1972 and you could say that it has been a very successful kind of project started in our country now mostly all the tigers in the world are found in India and Nepal. Around two thirds, more than two thirds of the old tiger population are found just in India and Nepal. And that is why these countries are the main target for the illegal trading, for the illegal hunting, those kind of things. And that is why you could say that there must be some steps, some measures taken in these countries. After that, we have the topic that is types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources. So types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources. Now even if we want to conserve all the forest and wildlife resources, still we just can't manage, control them in, by an individual. And that is why in our country, the, all the forest and wildlife resources have been managed, controlled by the forest department. That is kind of government of our country for the forestry department. So you could say that it's mainly in the his main work is to conserve all the forest and wildlife resources and after that to look after all the forest and wildlife resources now under this category because of the forest department in our country there can be three classification or three types of all the forest in our country now those are let's discuss about them with the first one that is reserve forests the reserved forests now you know what it in our country more than half of the forests are considered are declared as a reserved forests and these are the most valuable forests as far as the conservation of natural you know that natural vegetation wildlife and uh, all the forest resources are concerned so as far as the, there is a concern about the conservation of wildlife and forest resources these forests are the most valuable as more than half of all the poor forests available in our current country that are you could say that more than half of the forest of our country are declared as a reserved forest now the next type of forest here is protected forest 
for protected forest now around one third of the total forest area for countries considered as a protected forest now you could say that besides all those reserved forests these are known as the protected forest as you could say that there will be no depletion there were depletion in these type of forests but there will be no longer any depletion of these type of forest in these forest areas so you could say that those type of forests that were depleted earlier but now they will no longer be depleted and that is why they are known as the protected forest and over one third of all the forest area of our country is known is considered is declared as the pro protected forest and after that the last classification is unclassed forests now unclassed forests are those type of forests that have not been a kind of all the remaining forest besides the reserved and protected forests are known as unclassed forests now these can be owned either by an individual or by the government so this is not classified and that is why they are known as the unclassed forest you know what in some tribal areas we have the unclassed forest and they are known as unclassed forest because there would be no survey conducted in those areas as they are inhabited by the tribal communities you know what that if there is destruction of all the wildlife and forest resources then there will be direct effect effect on all those tribal communities who are living in them who are dependent for their food shelter and all those things on the forest for the spirituality food water shelter and all those things and that is why we can't just a uh, deal you could say like clear of the forest of our country and the wildlife resources after that if we talk about the regions of our country that are the reserve forest that come under the protected forest and the unclassed forest now protected forest and reserve forests are also known as the permanent forest as states for maintaining all those you know that depletion in these type of forest and that is why if we talk about the permanent forest then Jammu and Kashmir has the largest area are uh, constituting about 75% of all the total area as a permanent forest so you could say that in Jammu and Kashmir there is a largest forest area of permanent forest constituting about 75% of total land area into forests after that we have the states like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Anarcha Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh these type of certain states and some of the internet Maharashtra, some parts of Maharashtra as well where there is a large amount of all those reserved forests and in states like Odisha, Dhark and Bihar in those states there is more amount of forests like protected forests so you could say that in the most of the northern part there are more kind of protected forests and in most of the southern part there are more reserved forests as all of you know that in Kerala, in those areas, there is so much greenery, and that is why there are uh, there is so much reserved forest in those areas. And if we talk about the unclassed areas, then of course they are in the northeastern states of our country, like in Tripura, Nagaland, in those states, because those states are mainly inhabited by the tribal communities, and that is why those those have more and more unclassed forest as they are owned by those tribal communities by individuals, and that is why we can conduct a survey on those forests that much so you could say that that these are the three classification of the forest the distribution of the forest and we have talked about the distribution as well in our country in states like Himachal Pradesh in Dhaka and in Urisha in Bihar there are more and more protected forests and in states like Kerala Tamil Nadu Andhra Pradesh Maharashtra Karnataka there are more and more reserved forests and in the northern states there are more and more unclassed forests after that we have to discuss about community and conservation so community and conservation now you know what that in our country people there are many tribal communities that we often forget that have a long lasting connection with all those forests there are many communities in our country not just tribal communities but village communities as well that have a very long relationship long kind of relationship with all those forests they have a long connection to all those forests and that is why they also play a very important role in conserving all all the forest life you know that forest and wildlife resources you know what well, in our country in many wildlife resources in many wildlife sanctuaries there are many village communities that come up and save them like you know that in Rajasthan there is Sariska, uh, Sariska National Park for conserving the tigers and their villagers came and you know that were against the mining that was being done in that national park and after that in five districts of other in five villages 
villages of Alwar district in Rajasthan, all the land of forest has been in the rule is in the rule of the villagers in the villagers community, and if there will be no involvement of government in those areas, what happens? You know, you could say that what happens that villager communities, village communities become so possessive or overproductive of the forest, and that is a good thing because there will be no involvement of local individual or government of our country and they would protect the forest and wildlife resources in those areas so you could say now that, that there is a kind of villager community activeness that can be seen if they are active then they can save their forest as well and that is why we have a long belief connection with all those forests from a long history so let's discuss about it more in detail with our next and last subtopic of this chapter that is Sacred groves are wealth of diverse and rare species. So sacred groves are wealth of rare and diverse species. You could say that in our country there are many sacred groves. Many forests have been considered as sacred groves. That are that means that forest of gods and goddesses. They believe in the spirit spirits of forest in the mountain peaks, on the plants and animals. And that is why they are still because of all those communities there are still forests that are virgin that are the virgin and that is why you could say that they are known as a sacred groups so that is the groups or the forest of gods and goddess and they are worshipped by the people as well if we talk about some tribal communities specifically then the santals and the mundas worship the mahua trees and the kadamba trees after that even in our daily life we have people trees and banyan trees which we worship in many of your houses in many of your houses you might have seen that that there are so many people who worship the trees of people or the banyan trees after that in many weddings people have the people worship the mango trees and many other trees as well so you could say that you could say that there is a tamarind tree as well that has its own belief values in weddings so you could say that there are many trees which have been considered as a very virgin tree as a very sacred tree and are worshipped by people by communities and that is why we could say that we have a long connection with all those forests and if we talk about communities in our country for saving those for protecting those wildlife resources and forest resources then we have the Chipko movement Chipko movement or Chipko Andalan in Himachal Pradesh in Himalayan region now you know what that in that not it was not just against the deforestation but they also showed that it also shown that that afforestation with no service for so many species has has been enormously can be very successful as well so it was against the deforestation and after that there was so much afforestation with indigenous species as well and if we look at the another example then we have the example of temples as well whenever you visit a temple in our India in our country then most probably you will see a kind of monkey or langur or other animals like macaque that you will find in those temples but they are not harmed by the people they are still fed by the people or those people though those who go to the temple as they consider them too as devotees of gods and goddess and that is why we still have belief in all those pretty spirits and you know that sacred groups and wildlife resources after that if we talk about Rajasthan then they live with all the animals very peacefully in many of the villages of Rajasthan you would find that in Gram Sawas and Gram Panchayat there are many rules for protecting all those you know that wildlife resources and forest resources and then you will find many types of animals like peacocks and many animals that they have not been harmed by the people by the villagers instead they have been fed by the people they have been living with those people very happily and that is why in our country communities are also very important the most important people for their activeness for their uh, kind of for their saving all the forest and wildlife resources after that there is a provision by the government as well that has been made by the government that is jfm that is for you could say that 
and that is for the forest movement you could say that for joining forest movement and that was started in 1988 after that all the institutions have the right to protect those for forest and wildlife resources and in a kind of in return of that they would get a kind of materials produces that are non timber materials non but timber produces so you could say that there are many provisions by the government as well but still communities play the most important role for conserving for protecting forest and wildlife resources now even if you go to villages you would find that animals are freely living animals are very happy with those people because but in urban areas it is very less as in urban areas there are many animals that are still kept in zoos and you know that in many prisons as well so you could say that in rural areas in village communities and in tribal communities you would see a lot of affection between animals and people between animals and and humans and that is for our protection for conservation of all those forests and wildlife resources we need to have a decision making by the communities of our country but still that has not been accepted or that has not been given to the communities now there is a kind of request to you or a kind of statement to you that accept only those decisions that are environmental friendly conservation conser uh, conserving all those forests and wildlife resources not harming them if they are not conserving then they should not harm as well so you have to whenever a decision is being made you have to look at all the dimensions of that particular decision so that you will be more and more aware in your society as you would be a live a kind of asset to our country rather than a, a kind of liability to our country liability to our country so you could say that that is why if you are studying these chapters in geography and historical science then why is it so because of being more aware in our country being an asset to our country to provide that whatever we have studied to provide affection to all others you know what that if we are living in this society then we have to look at all the ecological dimensions and that is why we should have live in harmony in affection with all those other um, animals aren't they also animals plants have also lives we say and all those forests and wild resources they are also benefiting us but we should not uh, we have to look at them just for our need not for our greed So, so this is all we have discussed in this chapter now firstly we discussed about the classification of species in which we discussed about different types of species like endangered species endangered species there are many species you could say that like vultures and you have the indian buster in the uh, indian buffalo as well after that vulnerable species like gangetic dolphin aesthetic lion and those animals after that we have rare species endemic species extinct species in which we have asiatic cheetah and pink headed duck so you could say that those were the classification of so, uh, so all those you could say species after that we discussed about the destruction of forest wildlife resources after that about the conservation the project tiger and there is not just project tiger in our country there are still like project rhino in our country for protecting those rhinoceros so there are many animals who have become extinct who are vulnerable species who are rare species who are endemic species and after that we look about the communities as well so this is all we have discussed in this chapter and i'll discuss all the topics and sub topics and the next chapters of this book will be covered in the further upcoming videos So thank you very much